Okay, I'm here backstage with Orange Goblin, with the vocal uh, vocalist of Orange Goblin backstage at the Neubauern Open Air Festival. How was the show? How was the gig? It was great. Um, obviously, first time we've ever been here, so we had no kind of idea of what to expect. Mm -hmm. But it's a great little festival. Um, the crowd were very receptive and seemed to enjoy themselves. So, yeah, all good from our side. How was the journey to the festival? <coughs> it's been a long day. Let's put it that way. We set out. I left home about, I don't know, four o'clock this morning. Wow. Uh, got an early flight to Frankfurt, but it took sort of three hours to get through Frankfurt Airport. Then got to the hotel, had a little sleep, and then, you know, obviously festivals like this, you don't get a chance to sound check. So it's kind of hit and miss where you're going to have your, uh, your sound on stage. But everything went all right today. So other than it being a long day, it's been, it's been really good. Great. Now it's the end of August, so the festival season uh, is about to come to an end. Have you planned any shows for autumn and the winter time? Well, yeah, this is our last summer festival. We've got one more show in France, uh, in Rennes, in Brittany, uh, at the end of October. But other than that, we're just uh, we're writing a new album because we start recording on the 22nd of November. So uh, yeah, we're just focusing all our attention on writing and recording now. So I just wanted to ask you about the uh, potential uh, new album because uh, you released your last album in 2018. Yeah, the Wolf Bites Back. Yeah, obviously 2018 seems a long time ago. It was our last album for Candlelight. Um, and in between then and now, obviously we had the COVID years mm -hmm. so and we lost our bass player Martin we've got Harry in so you know it's, it's taken a while but I, I don't like to rush albums I like to make sure that everything's we're, we're happy with everything we're, we're putting out there so yeah we've we finally got you know nine or ten songs uh, ready to go into the studio in November and this will be our first one for a new label uh, Peaceville mm -hmm. Which is an honor for us, being UK based. You know, we grew up listening to bands like My Dying Bride and Anathema and Paradise Lost and Autopsy and Dark Throne. They're, you know, a seminal label. So to be on the same label as those bands is it's great for us. And this is our 10th studio album, so it seems quite fitting. So take me back like to your first album, Frequencies for Planet 10. Yeah. How did the process in writing a new album change to the, now to your new upcoming new album? I don't think it's changed a great deal to be honest you know we've always written the same way like everybody would contribute ideas with riffs and things like that and then we kind of construct the songs from there as soon as we've got the basis of a song I'll go away and write a vocal melody and some lyrics to fit with it and then we put it all together in the studio and that's that's how it comes out um, I think the only thing that's changed is you know when we started off and did frequencies from planet 10 we was all very young um, and going into a studio for the first time it's like being a kid in a toy shop you've got all these buttons and gadgets and things uh, and by the 10th album you know you're kind of used to what you're doing in there so we're just we're looking forward to getting in there and we know what it is what it what we want to sound like i think every orange goblin album has kind of progressed and sounded slightly different up until around 2012 when we did a eulogy for the damned we kind of found a sound that suited us and we've just had slight variations of that since then but this next one's just going to be another progression for wolf wise back okay i see and on the internet i read that you guys are serious tolkien fans so can you please tell me what's your favorite part or like favorite chapter of tolkien books like the Cimmerillion or lord of the rings oh it'd have to be the balrog Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, everybody loves that piece. <laughs> yeah, you shall not pass. <laughs> But yeah, obviously, the name Orange Goblin yeah. stemmed from us being fans of Tolkien. And, you know, when we started the band, obviously, Peter Jackson hadn't made the movies. Mm -hmm. So all we had was the Ralph Bakshi yeah, uh, yeah, animated yeah. movie and, mm -hmm. and uh, the books, obviously. But, um, you know, since, since forming Orange Goblin, Lord of the Rings has become a lot more accessible to the mainstream due to the Peter Jackson films, but he did a fantastic job. So, as a, as a fan, I think he, he sort of did them justice. Mm -hmm. I agree. And how did the fans change over the years? Like from your first album, you did a lot of shows, like now over 30 years of band history. Yeah. Did the fans change? Did something change? Um, Well, yeah, obviously the original fans have got older and they've grown yeah, with us, but we have, you know, those same fans turning up at shows now, bringing their kids along mm -hmm. and reintroducing them, so we still get a good mix of, like, 
heavy metal fans, death metal fans, we have stoner kids, we have the older classic rock fans. It's, it's a good mix because Orange Goblin is one of those bands where we're all from different backgrounds, we all like different sorts of things, mm -hmm. but we throw it all into the same pot and I think you can hear elements of all of our influences yeah. in the music. Mm -hmm. So so yeah, that kind of appeals to a broad spectrum of fans. And playing festivals like this is sort of perfect for us because I think you know a lot of people may not have heard Orange Goblin prior to shows like this and they might not enjoy the full show but there might be one or two songs that they can take away and go and check out an album so yeah we love festivals so do you prefer bigger festivals or small festivals like Neubon Open Air Festival I, I like them both I think they both have you know certain appeal like I say smaller ones like this where you're up and close and you can sort of interact with the crowd more great but you know I'd be lying if I said I didn't enjoy walking on stage and playing to 40 50,000 people yeah, of course. so so there's, there's good every side. musician uh, likes to play in front of a large crowd right yeah but at the same time I like doing intimate indoor shows where the walls and ceiling get sweaty and things like that because that's where you know that's where we're from that's where we started and uh, never want to forget those rooms so. and now uh, last question You're on a deserted island and you're only allowed to bring three metal albums. What three albums would you pick? See, that's going to change all the time. <laughs> But I'll probably take Iron Maiden, uh, Live After Death. Okay. Good choice. You'll get everything then. Yeah. <laughs> um, I'll take... There's got to be only one Black Sabbath album. Uh, I'd, I'd probably take Sabotage by Black okay. Sabbath. Great choice. And I'm going to have to take... Probably Show No Mercy by Slayer. Great, yeah. I would pick that myself. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, have you anything left to say for the fans from the Neubon Open Air Festival? Uh, no, just thank you very much for coming and hanging out with us and uh, giving us a warm reception. And hopefully we can come back and do it all again someday. We hope so. And can we stream together into the camera, Hey North? Hey North. Yeah. 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 One, two, three. Hey North!